welcome everybody to our meetup this evening. Uh, it, right at this moment, it looks to be a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the lovely Janelle York. And so uh, excited to have her here. And uh, we may have some more people come in. We may not. Who knows? Sometimes these things go this way. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, continuing our discussion. Before I hit record, we were talking a little bit about just some of the markets, um, you know, the, the way that inflation and uh, the, the jumps in rent growth are affecting people over the last uh, couple of years, as well as how it affects our, you know, ideas of investing in multifamily. And, uh, and then we were also dabbling a little bit in self-storage as well. So I uh, figure we're going to continue some of those themes and conversations. But uh, Janelle, if you don't mind, I'd love it if you just introduced yourself real quick uh, to everyone. Sure. I'm Janelle York. I am in located in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I am currently, uh, my, I have, my portfolio consists of 135 units owned, and um, uh, I'm looking for passive opportunities as well as active opportunities in both commercial multifamily and self-storage, both in Minnesota, in the Midwest, and in other strategic markets as well, so that I can achieve my goal of financial freedom as soon as possible. I hear you. I hear you. That's fantastic. So, and and I, I love that you're here and we can have kind of this one-on-one -on -one time because I've been meaning to reach out and, and have you know, a more in-depth conversation with you and just uh, find out more uh, about what you're into. So you said you're, you're into 135 units. Where's that located? Houston. Houston. Okay. Yeah. Good growing market. Yes. So <laughs> my, um, my first um, passive investment. So looking for more, looking, I have capital that I want to deploy. I was at my previous W-2 for 24 years, left that and pulled my, so I have a sizable 401k claim, you know, did all the things that they say you're supposed to do right before I got mm -hmm. really educated about real estate, put tons of money in my 401k, and got a Roth IRA and savings, you know, I've very, mm -hmm. always been very diligent about saving, saving, saving. And now that I'm getting, you know, that I'm educated in real estate, I'm like, oh, Saving not good. Invest, yeah. you know, invest. So I have this capital I want to put to use. When I left my company, I just, you know, I chose to just take my pension lump sum and I dropped it into a uh, traditional IRA just so that I could have some time to, rather than hit myself with a huge taxable tax event, right? You know, mm -hmm. just cashing it out. I just put it into an IRA. So I'm sitting here with some funds that I want to deploy into, um, passive investments and do some active investing. And I think I will be able to achieve my goal possibly quicker than I had anticipated. So I feel good about where I'm at. Just I'm enjoying networking with, you know, good people like you and people who know more than I do. And so I'm excited. And my son wants to do this with me. He is cool. a teacher and wants to do this with me. And so I, uh, you know, have made clear to he understands the power of real estate. He mm -hmm. understands the power of investing at a young age. So tr building true legacy wealth. In this yeah. Country. Oh, that's so fantastic. And that's, it's neat when, when the kids kind of, you know, see what you're doing and, and take an interest and stuff. I, I know that, you know, uh, when I was in my practice as a nurse anesthetist, my daughter, you know, my oldest daughter, took uh, a real interest in that as well but now she's seeing me do this and and so is my son and and you know they say oh you know my my daughter the other day was mimicking um doing a podcast you know she's heard me do enough of them and she's like i'm bobby jones and i'm da -da 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 -da. and and it was just so funny to see my five-year-old you know they really pay attention they really yeah. are taking it in Yes. So, um, but yeah, that's, uh, I, I'm excited for you in, in the sense of, you know, like being able to use your, your retirement accounts in that way, because it's such a, a, an underrated way to go. People just don't know it's possible. They think that they have mm -hmm. these accounts and you have to go through those traditional brokerages and, yep. and whatnot. And, and you don't, you can take more control of 
your retirement accounts and, and thusly more control of your retirement. Mm -hmm. So, well, cool. that's where I was, Bobby. That's where I was. I was like, mm -hmm. you know, all the things we're taught, do well in mm -hmm. school, go to college, get a good job, work, 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 save, save, save. So that when mm -hmm. you retire at 65, 70, whatever the retirement age is going to be by the time our kids get to be adults, and then you retire and then you have a few good years. Hope you, hopefully you've saved enough to retire on. Mm -mm. I want to teach people that there's a different way because I want to, I want to be an example to people. Hey, that's what I thought, you guys. Mm -hmm. That's what I believed. And I was diligent and saved up and saved up. And now I have this, this, you know, net worth. And I'm like, wait a minute, savings not the answer. Investing mm -hmm. it is the answer. So absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, and, and my wife and I, I, I will say to our credit, we saved and invested, um, you know, now granted for many, many years, that was just through the stock market. So oh. many years, we just, we saved as much as we could. And, and especially when we were double income, no kids, you oh. know, um, we, we were stocking away as much as we could. And that really came back to help us later on, yes. um, you know, but the thing is, what we realized was that, well, yeah, we were invested, but again, we couldn't touch that money. And so when we yeah. got to a point that we wanted to use it, we didn't have access to it. You, mm -hmm. you had to take all these penalties and, and everything else. But, but I can honestly say, like, I mean, I took money out of my retirement accounts to produce passive income now. It's mm -hmm. not for everybody. Mm -hmm. My wife still has her retirement accounts. But I was able to produce enough income so that we could live off of some of that income. But wait a minute. So you just said something key because that's when I was working that job, that was one of my biggest things was, okay, great. I have this nice sizable 401k that I've been pumping money into year after year and maxing out and blah, blah, blah. And, but I can't touch it. Yeah. You just said something key because, you know, leaving that job right now, it's my old 401k and now I can touch it. Mm -hmm. But are you saying that when you left your job that you took your 401k, are you saying you cashed it out or are you saying you I put just, it solo 401k and invested that way? So we've invested both ways. But th what I did with my retirement accounts was I cashed out uh, great portions of it and just took the penalties. Now, I will say the penalties were not as bad as I thought they would be because of the power of real estate, because we had a lot of passive losses. Uh, and, and so that was a very powerful thing for us. And actually, you know, I mean, yes, it was, it was a big tax hit, but we, I didn't end up needing nearly the amount of money to cover those, uh, you know, th that, that tax hit as I thought we would need. And so that just gave me extra money to put into more investments, which was cool. So wait, Bobby, because I remember this is, and it's all coming back to me. This is what intrigued me about you when we met a, about a month or so ago mm -hmm, at another mm -hmm. meetup, um, that you took, you, you cashed out your retirement, you partially cashed out your retirement accounts. And when you say you took the tax hit, but you found that the tax hit wasn't as bad as you thought it would be because you had mm -hmm. passive losses to offset them. Are you saying that's because at the same time, you were cashing out your retirement accounts. You already had invested in some passive invest investments. So no, my first investments in passive investments were me taking funds out of my uh, IRA. Uh, actually, my wife and I both took funds out of our, our um, IRAs to be able to invest in our first passive investment. And then I continued to do that with just my accounts. So oh. I, and I still have some funds in retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. My wife um, has self-directed accounts that we use to invest in real estate and, and senior living now. Um, you know, we, we've got a senior living investment and we have multifamily investments, but um, you know, and, and we've used them in that fashion and those are staying in those retirement accounts. But for myself, I, I wanted to produce passive income so that yeah. I could walk away. Yeah. And, and so that was what uh, we decided to do with my retirement funds. And the nice thing, so we were anticipating a larger tax hit just because we, we had, you know, some income 
and, and things of that nature that we were concerned about that year being an issue. But it turned out that a lot of the paper losses helped offset some of the income that we had, and it just all worked out. Um, you know, and, and that's not to say that it wasn't a tax hit, and that's not to say that it's for everyone. Yeah. Um, certainly, if if you're still wanting to, you know, if you're if you're still working and you're still, you know, uh, producing income and you like what you do, then by all means, like just you know, have a self-directed retirement account and use those accounts to, to invest this way. But, um, but for us, it, it was about producing that passive income. And, you know, the, the nice thing is that we had already figured out that we didn't need as much to live on as I made, you know, yep. um, yeah, as, as, you know, in my nursing career. So basically we knew that if we could get to a certain threshold of, of income that we were fine. And, Two and a half years later, here we are, and you know we we haven't run out of money. We we haven't had to to dip into to crazy things and 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 take all kinds of crazy plans. And as a matter of fact, two of our investments that we invested in, um, two, two of the first ones that we invested in, already flipped over. Uh, they were five year holds, but they ended up selling after two years and nearly doubling our money um, on both of those investments. So. Now we 1031 those, uh, you know, to save on the taxes, you know, just deferring the taxes. And mm -hmm. now, you know, once those start to produce income, all of a sudden our income goes up by another thousand dollars a month. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's, it's like, I didn't do anything to get that. I just, you know, we, we invested and that's, that's mm -hmm. what it looks like. Everything you're talking about, as you're talking, all I can think of is courage. It just takes the courage to, to do something that society tells us is a no-no. You mm -hmm. don't touch your 401k. You don't touch your IRA. You cannot touch these things until you're mm -hmm. 59 and a half, until you're 70 and a half. Until you can take your required minimum distributions, blah, blah, blah. And to have the courage to say, eh, eh, I'm going to buck mm -hmm. the rules that this government has told me I must follow and I'm going to chart my own path and look how, and you're a perfect example of how, and like you said, it's not for everyone. It depends on your mm -hmm. situation, but if your situation can allow it, go for it. Yeah. That takes courage and fortitude to do something that we've been trained all our lives, basically not to do. Well, I, there I is love that story. That, there's a ton of societal pressure that tells you, you're supposed to be working. Yep. And, you know, I mean, and I get it from my own family. Like for the first year, I, I can't tell you how many times certain family members were like, well, why don't, why don't you just go get a job? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't need to, I, I don't have to, we, yeah. we're okay. Um, you know, and, and I will say, you know, like my wife still works, but she took a job um, that's in the school system for lifestyle purposes. She could make a lot more money in other positions but you know what she has you know she doesn't work any more weekends she doesn't work any any more holidays she's got a couple weeks off at christmas she's got the summers off you know and spring break um you know we we've been able to take trips um with our family that we would have never been able to take and and one of them in particular um you know i hadn't my mom lives in florida i live in north carolina um, it's, it's a long trip to get down there, um, you know, to where she's at. And so, you know, we just, we had not been able to go down and see my mom for any kind of a, a period of time. Um, but two years ago we were, you know, and this was, this was after we had, you know, I had just kind of walked away and we'd started to produce that, that income. We said, well, Christmas is coming up. You have the time off and, I'm not doing anything. Let's go down and see mom. And, and it turned out to be one of the, the best experiences, best trips we've taken. And, uh, and it was right before the pandemic. So it, the timing of it just was perfect because we weren't able to see my mom then for nearly two years. Um, because she, you know, ha she's been on the, the kidney transplant list and she, you know, she got her kidney transplant this Thanksgiving. We were going to go down for another Christmas, but she's on all these immunosuppressants, so she can't be around the kids. But guess what? When the kids get out of school, I'm going to take them down for a week. 
because I just have the time. And then we're going to go take a big family vacation. Um, you know, last summer we went to Michigan and, uh, you know, for three weeks and then followed it up immediately with another week trip to, to Tennessee. And then we're going to, you know, this summer we're taking a month long trip overseas. It'll be the kid's first trip to do that. These are things that I could never do in my practice. I would never be able to just go take a month off, you know, and, yeah. and now, I mean, we jam pack our summers with all kinds of vacations because both of us have two months off, yes. you know? So it's, it's just, it's a, a very freeing thing. And, and it is about that time, you know? Um, sure. Do I wish I made more money? Yeah. I mean, who doesn't? I mean, I I've, I've met people that have net worth in, in several millions of dollars and they think, well, I need to, I need to get more. I need to get more. You know, and, and, you know, it's the question I have is, okay, well, what, do, how does that extra income really change your lifestyle? Exactly. You know, and if it's not something that's going to necessarily, you know, really change that lifestyle, then, then maybe you don't actually need it. Maybe you're chasing mm -hmm. after something that society's telling you to chase after instead exactly. of what you actually need. Exactly. Yes. So, but uh, now, uh, refresh my memory, you know, what, what is it that you, you um, did for work uh, before? You said you, you cashed out and everything, you know, but uh, what was it that you were doing? Yeah, I, um, I, I worked in the automotive industry. I got my degree in engineering, and then I started out my um, career in the auto industry in manufacturing engineering. And I learned early on that I love the people part of the business more than the technical stuff. So... I love working with our team members on the assembly lines. I worked on various launch teams, launched multiple vehicle lines at different plants across the country. And um, after 10 years, I, I, I left Minnesota, born and raised in Minnesota, graduated from the University of Minnesota, moved to Michigan to work in the auto industry and then secured a transfer with the company back to Minnesota, but I moved into marketing and sales. So I was working in wholesaling vehicles to dealers. So I, you know, again, working with the people part of the business, I wanted to get closer to our customers and I got about as close as you can get without <laughs> actually talk, with dealing with the consumers. I was working with our dealers. Mm -hmm. So I wholesaled vehicles to them in an auction setting. And so I had to, I, you know, was basically, um, in charge of the Twin Cities market as far as used vehicles for Ford Motor Company. And mm -hmm. so went and called on dealers, made sure I was, you know, was able to help them with their inventory needs so that they had vehicles to sell to their customers and did mm -hmm. that for 14 years. But, you know, I said, you know what, it's time to do something different. So I moved over and I actually left that, that job last April. But after I left, you know, I, I actually considered, you know, I was like, you know, let's just, let's just do this early retirement now. And I said, yeah. So I went and got another, I'm working now in a whole different industry. I'm mm -hmm. using my skills that I used in my previous job, but working in higher ed fundraising now. And so doing something that I'm passionate about, always education has always been a passion of mine, but again, working on the, you know, kind of on the sales side and mm -hmm. doing that and building my real estate. I and my son and I call it, we're building our real estate empire. So, there you go. So oh, that that's so cool. If I choose to continue working this job, then I will. But I want to be mm -hmm. able to do it because I want to, not because mm -hmm. I feel I have to. And he sees it. My son, you know, he's 17. So he's a senior in high school. And he comes to me a few weeks ago and says, Mom, you know, I've been looking. He got, he's applied to his colleges. I've got a, enough. I've, I've been saving in a 529 plan for him since before oh, yeah. he was born. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's got money to cover because I felt very strongly. I didn't have student loans. I was a scholarship student in college. I told him no student loans. Don't believe in it. Don't want it. Don't. Mm -hmm. I, so I tried to prepare him for that. But I said, you know, make sure you're applying for all the scholarships you can get. Blah, blah, blah. So he applied to the schools he wanted to go to and he got accepted. And now he's sitting here telling me about a month ago. You know, I've been looking at the classes that would be in the curriculum that I want to take, and these classes don't seem interesting to me, Mom. I don't mm -hmm. think I'd like them. So I said, well, what are you saying? He says, I don't think I want to go to college, Mom. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you want to do instead? 
my 17 year old son said, I want to do the work in the business with you. I want to do real estate with you. He said, I hear all mm -hmm. the fun you have. I hear you on your meetups all the time and how much fun you have and all the people you're talking to and you're just so into it. He's mm -hmm. like, I want to work in the business with you. And then I can, he's interested in environmental studies. He says, if I do that, I can, I can use my money from real estate to then put into and help those companies who are making strides in the environmental mm -hmm. and sustainable. Yeah. So yeah. my 17 year old is already thinking I can build my wealth and then put my wealth to use to, to be helpful to society as a whole. And mm -hmm. I'm proud of him for thinking like that. And I've talked to, you know, family members and says, Hey, you know, he says he doesn't want to go to college. They're very supportive. They're like, shoot, these young people nowadays, they know what they want and they're, yeah. they're not ready to just sit back and say, well, I'm going to follow the prescribed path that society set for me. They, they say there's more power to them. Yeah. I think there would be people in the family who say, well, no, he needs to go to college and you know, oh, yeah. gosh, how could you not? Mm -hmm. And I've had people tell me, wow, credit to you, mom, for, you know, not pushing college on him, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, I growing up and even, you know, when I was younger, my big thought was, I felt that college was important, but mm -hmm. now, like we were, like we were talking about, I think before you started recording, there's so many ways to make money and there's so many asset classes just within real estate that, yeah. that through which you can achieve your goals. It depends on what your yeah. goals are. So, well, and there's free education everywhere. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, now, uh, with with college, it's it's just so different than when we went through it because, you yeah. know, it. it there's such a cost benefit ratio that you have to take into account. And, you know, like, a, for instance, my, my brother, um, he's about to graduate this year with his master's in social work, you mm -hmm. know, but, but he spent eight years in the Navy first before, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then he, once he got out, then he started to pursue, you know, college, but he was finally ready, you know, like he, he was not ready at the age of 18 to do any kind of, collegiate work you know he just was not that's not where his head was at and so but but he kind of discovered more of his passions and things um you know after his naval career and and found that this was a you know the, the social work career was something that he wanted to pursue but at the same time he's also got a different mindset because he's already gone out and he took he's got um his tsp um, which is the, the, um, you know, the savings plan, uh, retirement account from the military during his time there, he converted mm -hmm. it over to an EQRP mm -hmm. and then he took that money and he went and bought, um, you know, he, he, um, through a, a mutual, uh, mining company, he bought Bitcoin mining, uh, equipment. So now he's going to have machines that are producing Bitcoin for him and they pay themselves off within a year and then they last for five to seven years. And so the returns on that are great. I mean, they're fantastic. Uh, it, it blows your mind, but he says, I'm looking to build wealth, you know, and, and he knows that he's kind of come out and be a social worker. It's not like he's going to be breaking the bank, but he's doing something that he wants to do, but he's also keeping an eye on, you know, that retirement angle and, you know, creating that freedom for himself to have choices yeah. uh, later on in life. And that's really what it's about, right. you know, for most people is, you know, it's, it's not about quitting work, you know, like a lot of people enjoy what they do, yes. but if you can create options for yourself to say, you know what, I like what I do, but I'm burnt out. I, I, instead of working five days a week, if I could just work two, then it wouldn't feel, I wouldn't feel this way, you know? Yeah. And, and how many, you know, seniors that we see now too, that are so used to working and they've been working full time for 30 years, mm -hmm. they're not able to just go right into retirement anyway. Yeah. Um, they, they want to still keep their hands in doing something. So there, mm -hmm. you know, you have that partial retirement and, and stuff like that. And, Right. And I mean, I guess that's what I would consider myself as being because I, I didn't have to start this business. I didn't have to, to do any of these things because we're comfortable. We, we have enough income, um, but it's something that is 
uh, that I am passionate about. And, and it's something that so many people just have no idea about any of these kinds of investments. So that's kind of my role is to, to help people out and to show them all the different opportunities that are out there. And, right. and even I, like, there are some things out there that, I mean, I just had no idea were possible. I had no idea they were options or opportunities for people. And through doing this, I have learned so much. Uh, and, and it's, I mean, my mind just gets blown when I, I learn all these things and it's like, you know, I mean, just some of the stuff, you know, the social media stuff, um, you know, the influencer stuff and, and all of those kinds of things. It's just, it's amazing. Like you said, the opportunities for people to, to make a living and make an income. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Kudos to your son for, for being able to, to kind of think outside the box, because I think that's, more of where we're going as a society is, you know, what's, what's outside of the norm. Um, you know, because the, there is no real normal anymore. <laughs> it's, uh, things are changing so fast and, you know, there's, there's so much, um, this just gonna, I mean, the world is going to be different in 10 years than it looks right now, uh, completely. Um, you know, my opinions are that crypto is going to change a lot of that. Um, you know, we're going to have the fractionalization of, of real estate that goes on with, with crypto, um, and, and, and all kinds of things, you know, that, that it's going to touch, but, uh, and I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, like I was looking at something this week, uh, about, um, esports and the, um, you know, the video game community and, and all. I mean, you have these, these arenas that are packed to watch people play video games. I, you know, that, my mind. that is so funny you say that because my son will be on his phone and I'm like, he's just, he's sitting here and I can hear somebody talking mm -hmm. and he's sitting on his phone and I'm like, what are you doing? We're watching this guy live stream himself playing this game and I can't, I'm like, what's entertaining about that? But they love it. Yep. These kids love this stuff and they yep. sit for hours and do it. And I'm like, yep. that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. It, and, but that's that's where we're at, you know? Yep. So, oh, hey, Don's going to join us here. Let's, let's sure. see. Go ahead and admit him in. This has been so oh. great. Bobby. This has I been. I love having you to put to myself. <laughs> <laughs> now you get to so share cool. me with Don, but, but yeah. Don, I yeah. mean, yes. I'm excited to have him in here too. Cause he, yeah. you know, I, I'm going to be, uh, oh, let's see. I've got a conversation with somebody coming up. Uh, I'm trying to remember who it is. Hey, Don. Hey, how's it going? Hi, good, man. Good. Hey, Just uh, good to see you, man. I, I've got, I was looking at it and I have, <clears throat> I had a, I've got a conversation coming up here soon. Is it Alex Olson? You work with Alex with Happy Camper or is that somebody else? No, not Alex. Uh, <laughs> I, I got a call coming up with somebody that I think. Maybe. Was, so, so who else we have camp have campers that uh, jared conan maybe him um he goes to some of the meetups now maybe it's um, maybe it's and, him and uh, uh oh you know what <laughs> i have we don't have a call scheduled yet but it, it was talking with jared i connected with him okay and uh it was like oh yeah hey man we got to get together and chat so yeah yeah i gave him some of my well i gave him the, the list of the meetups that you know i've have attended or attend and so we started going to some of those himself as well too so yeah you probably got them when they were yeah. on, on uh angels or, or something but yeah. yeah yeah so did i did i miss the party or is it just uh just no <laughs> it's just been it's just been us tonight man it's, wow. it's one of those rare occasions um you know i've had it happen a couple times but uh <clears throat> was was actually kind of surprised by it tonight uh because yeah. we have been ticking up in numbers but uh yeah no yeah, man yeah. it's Pleasure to have you. I've had Janelle all to myself this whole time. So yeah, yeah. Well, it's good. Um, glad, glad you guys kept it going without me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, man. Great to have you here. So, uh, well, uh, I'd I'd love to hear more about uh, what you're into these days, man. You know, it, you yeah. got the happy camper stuff going. Uh, how's, yeah. How's that been? Yeah, it's going good so far. Yeah. You know, like I said, uh, you know, I, I've, I've You've heard it before already. I'm not going to go through the whole spiel of how it works and everything. And Janelle might be interested. I'm not sure about it I yet. Want but... to hear it. I want to hear <laughs> but, it. But <though>. uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll give some some brief explanation. Of course, then Janelle, you're free to ask more questions. I'm sure Bobby would like to hear your questions as well. But um, so what what uh, what we do um, 
which is kind of different than what everybody else is doing is uh, we syndicate RV campgrounds. Um, so, you know, it's similar type of way it's done like with multifamily, but uh, uh, different value add processes and uh, slightly different underwriting, but uh, in the end, much higher returns, uh, which is what really attracted me to it. Um, you know, is, as, as, you know, I'm sure you've, if you've looked at uh, most of the recent uh, multifamily syndications opportunities that you've, I'm sure looked at recently, uh, they're all pretty much about the same average returns, right? And not really much, nothing stands out from one from the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, eight to ten percent, you know, returns, and then sixteen percent IRR. You know, two x multiple. Mm-hmm. That's about typical average, we'll say. You know, um, mm-hmm. there's a few outliers in there, but but not by much. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, that was never good enough. You know, I was like, you know, I think like like most people, I'm, I'm like, you know, you you've, you know, LinkedIn especially, of course, and Facebook, you see people posting about how yeah, we we close on this deal, we've got this opportunity coming up, and you know, so everybody's seeing all this going on. It's like, man, I gotta get a deal. You know, so you get that that mentality is like. You know, it, it, you know. I guess I refer to it as more herd mentality, right? So you see everybody else doing it, so you want to get in and do it too, and yeah. just all the crowd and assume that you know everybody else is doing it. So it must be what people do. The eight percent returns are good enough. That's what everyone's doing. So let's do it. Get our money working and, and instead of losing them in the bank, you know. Um, and so, you know, for me, that's the, the entire time I've looked at these. Even before I got involved with networking with anybody, I looked at a few, you know, a couple years back, and even then, I was like, man, that's that's I mean that doesn't seem great <laughs> you know I, I was like you know from my, my personal perspective i've been the when i buy my own personal properties so some fourplexes and, and other things i've been buying you know i was generally able to find of course this is a few years back okay prices were different so i doubt it's not not quite the same but even back then you know i was, I was getting uh, like 40 percent annual returns on, on the cash on cash and um you know and different things i was doing so i was like why would I accept that? <laughs> just, just to say I've got a hundred doors, you know, what I'm, I mean, I'm not really mine anyway, but so anyway, so I was always kind of, and, and on top of that, of course, the, uh, most of them that I saw a couple years ago were all, you know, minimum of 75,000 to get in. It's like, that's way too much. Um, anyway, so, so, but recently, of course, things have changed a bit now, different, different uh, times. And, and I know it's, it's impossible to find any great deals now, or even for, for what I've been looking for. Um, so I try to get into different things that are more unique and, and different. Um, and so, you know, besides the campgrounds, I'm also on a different team that does new development stuff as well. And that's a different topic we can discuss later too. But, um, anyway, so, so, so yeah, recently I've, I've myself started to kind of fall that, that same, I guess, uh, you know, need to get in a deal. Cause I see everybody else talking about it. Hey, we got this deal. Let's get this deal. And so I'm like, yeah, I got to get in a deal. <laughs> you know, I have been joined some masterminds kind of for that reason to, to get in these deals and, and, you know, and it comes down to, to looking at it. And then again, I'm still like, man, as much as I want to get in a deal, I just, I can't, I can't do it. The, the I'm, 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 I'm more of the, 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 the mindset of looking at it as a opportunity cost is like, so if I, I have limited resources. So if I put all the money I have available into one of these deals, and then two months later, something way better comes along. I'm going to be upset that I missed out on this opportunity because the money's in this other deal. It's not that great just because I want to get a deal. Yeah. Um, so I've been holding off for that. And so with, with the, with the RV campgrounds, you know, it, it's what's unique about it from my perspective, kind of what attracted me to it. Um, not so much because of the camping, I'm not much of a camper myself, you know, even though I'm an Eagle Scout and I think I did camping, but uh, I don't particularly like camping, even though this is more like glamping, it's not, you know, not in a tent. Um, but, uh, but even then the, the returns are what attracted me to it, you know, as I looked into it and why, why, you know, when, when I get invited to join the team, um, I took some time to research it, or I was already researching ahead of that, you know, that not, not getting how I got into all this, but, but, uh, but I looked at it as, okay, this is a very unique opportunity that uh, I don't want to let pass up. You know, if, if, you know, a couple years down the road, if I say, no, it's not multifamily, you know, forget it, you know, and then I'm kicking myself in the butt later when, when I see they're still killing it with these raising deals, I'm still getting these crappy, you know, probably in a couple years, 4% return deals. And so like, you know, so, so, so yeah. So, so for the campgrounds, it's more, we're, we're in the range of, 15 to 20 percent cash on cash um and about 30 percent irrs you know so in that same time frame of a five-year hold for any other multifamily i'm getting like double the returns uh and then usually okay with with that it gets like a 3x multiple you know because you're you're basically doubling your money just from the cash flows alone and then you get the equity double as well mm-hmm. so um so i was like yeah that's 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 where i'd prefer to put my money um yeah and, and then of course you know getting to talk to people that you know I, i've i've only been involved with them since end of November, really, when I joined the team. And so I've just, you know, slowly myself learning more and talking about it more, getting more used to talking about it, you know, and, and 
discovering things. And so as I talk to other people that are of course, mostly multifamily investors, it's, it's, I come across two different perspectives. You know, there's people that are getting like I was before you're, you're focused on only multifamily, no shiny object syndrome, they call it. And like no stuff storage or RVs, nothing. Cause it's not multifamily. You know, I'm, I'm focused on only multifamily and that's all I'm going to do. Uh, so there's those people, which I'm like, okay, great. If that's, if that satisfies you go for it. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say don't do it, but you know, I, I'm, I'm personally more open to different options, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, and then there's the other side of people that are like, blown away because it's like amazing that you know it's never even heard of before never even considered because it's it's not talked about you know as much um but uh, they're they're happy to see a different option with much higher returns you know again they're they're not ones that fixated on saying i'm i'm an lp in 600 doors or whatever you know that that doesn't matter you know it's like i tell them like yeah you're in a thousand doors but you're getting crap returns who cares you know exactly. just to say you're in a thousand doors doesn't mean nothing <laughs> if, it, if you're yeah. getting no returns on it you know yeah. it's it's yeah. um so Anyway, so 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 uh, so yeah, those people are the ones that I'm more excited to talk about or talk to, I should say, because they're they're mm-hmm. ones that get engaged and, and more um, happy to to learn about it. You know, because that ones the, the other side, the other people are they're excited to learn about it, but at the same time they almost feel like they're they're guilty for talking about it because they're focused on multifamily. You know, um, everybody tells them, don't let yourself get distracted. The five exactly. shiny objects, and you have to focus on one thing at a time. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. And I even I even kind of felt that way at first, like when. So, so I had, I had first started looking into, into the RV parks about, uh, I don't know, six, eight months ago, mainly because I heard about it on a different podcast and where I live, I'm, I'm like an hour and a half from Yellowstone. So this is a very great place for, you know, campgrounds because there are around here and all my neighbors have campers and things. So, so I was like, huh, that makes sense, you know? And, uh, but, uh, around that same time I, I joined a mastermind that's focused on multifamily and stuff. And so I was almost afraid to even mention it in that mastermind because I'd like, they're going to kick me out or, or, you know, yell at me for having shiny objects in there or whatever. And, but, uh, so, so I, I did, I took time to think about it. Even when, when I got asked to join the team, I took another month just to think about it and, and look into it more many for that reason. It's like, you know, how, how am I going to, how, how's people going to look at me? I'm, I'm, I'm like a trader or something, you know, but, um, I'd go to start going to some of these meetups that, that, you know, we all go to and in the breakout rooms, I'd mention to people to see what they thought about it, you know, and, uh, surprising i never got any negative feedback you know most people were even like yeah we just rented an rv this last summer and had a great time that we'd love to invest something like that i'm like hmm, interesting so so i took those things in mind and again looking at the returns i was just like yeah i i, I don't care if whoever calls me names i don't care it's you know this is for me not for them That's right. this is a great opportunity and so i'm not going to mm-hmm. pass it up just because yep. of whatever dumb you know mindset reasoning so uh anyway so i got involved with that and, and again the more i talk about it, the more i learn about it and the more i love it um, and what's great again, like, since most people don't know about it, you know, I get to share something new that people haven't heard about, you know, cause I can tell you about, yeah, we've got this, you know, multifamily opportunities like, yeah, okay. You know, it, nothing new. I can yeah. tell you there than where it's at and what we're going to do with it, which is the same thing as everybody else does, you know? So, um, so this is something different and unique that stands out in the crowd, you know? Um, and then of course, on top of that, the, the returns are great, you know, and you know, if, especially if you're a, 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 an outdoorsy person or a camper, you know, that, uh, you can say you could actually go to this property and hang out there with your friends and family and talk about you being invested in there give you you know something to, to mention rather than just saying hey I, i'm i invested in an apartment building okay great so <laughs> you know, i'm gotta, not gonna live there you know, yeah. you're not gonna have a barbecue in the parking lot you know so yeah uh, <laughs> you, know. yeah, you bring your little grill your tailgate grill and just end up in the parking lot of the apartment complex oh yeah well i own this place you know exactly yeah <laughs> Right. Well, um, yeah. I was going to ask you, though, so our, I guess um, part of the appeal here is kind of what we were talking about, Janelle, earlier with self-storage in that a lot of these places are probably owned by some mom and pop you know, owners. And so there's just more meat on the bone from an efficiency <clears throat> standpoint. You, know, you, can, you can run the operations more efficiently. Right. You can um, you know, create systems that, that maybe they have not done uh, in the past. Yep. So um, – you know, from, from that standpoint, I, I would imagine there's just, you know, more to do with these properties. It's, it's, and, and that's where like, I'm trying to keep my mindset. I've actually thought about changing the name of this meetup because it is, a, I mean, it's apartment investing is your plan B, but mm-hmm. you know, like I'm all about all types of alternative investing. Right. And so, you know, I love the idea of the RV campgrounds. I love self-storage, senior yep. housing, you know, the, the Bitcoin mining, all that, you know, Airbnb funds yep. that I've seen out there. There are so many ways and, you know, to, to create that wealth. And so why limit it to just apartments? Um, 
you know, if my goal is to help my investors, then I need to be showing them the best investments. And so that's right. the way that I look at it and, and that I've started to approach things uh, in this new year is, you know, I, I want to have, you know, access to a lot of different types of investments, not just multifamily. And I, I still, I mean, I love multifamily. It's done very well by me, yeah. but there's a lot to be said for all of the other stuff that's out there that hasn't been as tapped into yet. You know, it's, there's something to be said for getting into something early. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people who made a ton of money in multifamily 10 years ago, you know, yeah. because they jumped in at the end of the financial crisis, yep. prices were in the, in the dumpster and, you know, you, you had the chance to actually, you know, really get into these things and make a big difference. And, you know, with more and more eyeballs coming into multifamily, it's just becoming more challenging to do that. Um, exactly. and, and there are fewer mom and pop owners, at least in that hundred plus unit range, you know? Mm -hmm. So I love what you're doing and, and I'm going to figure out a way that we can work together. I swear it, Don. <laughs> Cause, uh, I was thinking as you were talking, Don, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah exactly. I mean, you know, it, it, and, and like, like you're saying, Bobby, it, it's, um, uh, yeah, with, with what we do, it's, and I think I've told you this before, Don, but Janelle hasn't heard it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's almost unlimited upside, you know, really. Cause mm -hmm. so like you said, with, with departments, there's only so much you can do to, to really raise the rents to the max that the market will allow, you know, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you can gold plate the entire apartment and it's still going to rent for a thousand dollars a month. If that's the average for that area. <laughs> you yeah. Know? So, yeah. so, uh, but like I said, with the, the campgrounds, it's, it's, it's uh, different in multiple, like you said, most of them are mom, mom and pop places. So there's a lot of things we can do to modernize them, get them up to, up to date. Uh, the big thing, of course, getting them an online um, presence with, with, you know, online reservations and, and dynamic mm -hmm. pricing. That's a big thing right out there. Cause most of those yeah. places, you know, we would talk to them, they, they may have a website, but they still do only all the reservations by phone only. So they'd like to have that personal contact and they have like a set price, like, here, here's our price per night. So it doesn't change no matter how full they are or the mm -hmm. season. So uh, they can easily just tell whoever calls it what to do. Uh, well, these days, most people aren't making phone calls, you know? So, so if you can't, find online make a reservation online then you're not going to go there yeah um so that's one of the minimum things we go through this that alone increases the revenue by five percent mm -hmm. um at least you know if or not more but then there's all these different types of amenities we can add on you know that either attract people to come there or when they're there they spend more money on different things because mm -hmm. uh, because people are there not to, they're not there to live cheaply they're there to have fun and have a good time you know yeah. so it's like a vacation you're going to spend money on vacation so yeah um, so yeah, we, we can capitalize on that, you know, as much as we can. Uh, we've got one actually, we just got an LOI accepted this last weekend for one that's uh, in the Ozarks area. Um, that one, it's kind of funny. It's a mom and pop place. Uh, it's of course got uh, an attached marina with it on the lake, um, which I think I want to say offhand has maybe 150 marina spots, you know? Oh, wow. Um, and uh, it's got the, the, the RV campground space. It's got uh, a 40 room hotel on it. Uh, and a restaurant that they lease out to local restaurant, you know, in the area. Um, so that one we have, we're, what, what we've seen so far, we were just haven't done our full due diligence yet on it, but uh, there's a tons of opportunity in this one. The, 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 uh, the restaurant, they're, they're renting the restaurant to this, this business for like, I don't know, like two and a half percent of the revenue or something like that. So it's, so it's like very, very cheap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so almost mm -hmm. for free. So like, yeah, well, we're number one, we're going to rework that deal. Yeah. Um, the, the, they've, they've focused mainly on the marina, not so much the RV side of it. So there's a lot of improvement to do on the RV side mm -hmm. uh, and tons of extra land that we can add on to and do different things. Um, so this one, and of course, it's being the Ozarks alone is, is you know, it, it draws attractive, or is an attraction for people to go there in the beginning. Yeah, of so, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so that one's going to be a huge opportunity when it comes up. It's right now, it, we have, again, yeah, on the website, there's uh, access to view the, the properties available. But right now, there's only mm -hmm. basic information about that one. And we, one we also have in Indiana. Um, just because we're as until we finish the due diligence, we're not going to have anything available. You can't invest them in yet, but just give you a basic idea of this is coming. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But once we have all that done, then we'll put up all the financials, all the underwriting, all the you know everything that you may needs to to review and look through. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, but yeah, so so uh, and with this as well, you know, our goal this year is to close on at least twelve properties. So we have multiple opportunities to to get in different deals. You know, if not now, later. You know. Yeah. Um, mixture of five, six Bs and Cs. You know, so so everybody will have a chance to get in. Um, anyway, but yeah, so, so it's great. Um, but, uh, you know, like you're saying, Bobby, I, I'm, I'm hundred percent agree with you that as far as like different, uh, asset classes, different opportunities, whether it be 
not not even real estate related, like I said, even Bitcoin or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've always been, I guess, consider myself opportunistic. So you know, whatever makes sense that's going to you know have a great return, then yeah, I'm, I'm open to it. You know, I might need to learn a bit about it, but uh, as long as I've got somebody else that's doing it or has done it and knows what they're doing, I can trust to help along the way. Then then yeah, I'm not just going to you know going to throw my money into Bitcoin because I raised buying Bitcoin, not knowing yeah, yeah. anything about it. But uh, but if I know somebody else is doing it and, and kind of help explain the process, then sure, yeah, why not? You know, if, yeah. if the you know returns are good and the risk is low, then sure. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, so along with that, so so besides the campground stuff I'm doing, um, and I think Bob, you've heard this before. At least when I, when I first started networking about a year ago, I was mentioning this yeah. one. You know, I'm also on a team that does new development. So we do ground up development of multifamily, uh, but instead of doing you know, a purchase and value add, it's just totally brand new, um, and uh, offering great returns on that too. So so with with that team. Um, we're doing a project here right now in, in Idaho that's 800 units. So a total of 800 doors between, uh, I think it's like 150 townhomes and the rest are just condos, apartments, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, again, it's not like, like if you think of that size, you're going to assume like, you know, the projects or something, you know, in Bronx or whatever, nothing like that. You know, it's, it's not a condensed concrete jungle. It's a lot of big open space, you know, green space with uh, walking trails and ponds and splash pads, uh, amphitheater, you know, all these great things to make it a nice community. Um, mm-hmm. and on that one, it's uh, also it, what attracted me to be this as well is again, the returns, you know, it's, um, there's no cash flow, of course, during that, that construction phase. Cause you know, mm. obviously, but, uh, you get a big return at the end of it and, and the time frame is much shorter. So, so even though it's, you know, 800 units, it's done over three phases. Uh, so each phase is expected to last about two years. So in that two year time frame, we're, we're estimating about an, 40% annual return comes out mm-hmm. of base. So in, in about two years time, you can almost double your money. Yeah. Um, and most likely, you know, we'll do better than that 40% just because that was based off of prices at that point, you know, the beginning. <laughs> so mm-hmm. they're going to sell mm-hmm. for even more now, but, but um, so I was like, okay, yeah. So I could put my money into a syndication, get, you know, get some cash flow and, and double my money in five years, or I mm-hmm. could put money in this, have no cash flow, but double my money in two years. You know, so, so yeah, I get that money back quicker. I can reinvest in something more and, and yeah. why not? Yeah, and, and the way I looked at it as well, I, I would tell people is if you're getting phase one, take your, your capital and your gains, reinvest it into phase two and take that and reinvest into phase three. So you've never put any additional money in this deal other than when you first put into it. By the time all three phases are done, you basically 10 extra money in that, uh, you know, six year time frame. Yeah. You know, so that's, yeah. I mean, that's incredible. That's, and, and that's, that is the power of some of these alternative investments and some of these, you know, different ways of thinking about it. Because obviously right. when, when people are thinking about multifamily, a lot of it is buying an existing property and kind of doing the fix and flip mentality mm-hmm. with it. And, and you can certainly do very well with that. But um, yeah, this is something that, uh, you know, the new construction is going to start picking up again and it already has. Um, this year. So, right. you know, Hey, why not? Uh, I'm, I'm in a senior housing. Um, that's a new construction. Uh, I'm an, uh, you know, just an LP passive investor in that, mm-hmm. but the returns for that over the five year period are projected to be at, at I believe it's a 3.3, 3, um, X, you know, multiple. And so, yeah. and, and they expect that it actually might not take nearly that long because, with senior housing, there's such a need for it. Mm -hmm. And there's a ton of institutional investors, uh, you know, and these REIT fund managers that are looking to buy these properties up, you know, they, they want to have access to these properties. And uh, so new construction and and everything, it, you know, that that's very tempting for them. So as soon as you get Mm -hmm. it built and, and, you know, start to fill it up, then they're, they're swooping in and, and want to buy it off your hands. So you know, there's, there's a lot to be said for some of these things. I, yeah. I agree with you. For sure. Yep. And, and but, uh, uh, along those lines, my, so my, I'm open to that stuff as well. Back to, um, I'll say three years ago now, 2018, I think, or 2019, something like that. Um, one of my neighbors is a, uh, uh, a, um, we call it assisted living administrator, you know, so, mm, mm-hmm. uh, so he and I were, we have been trying to purchase an assisted living place, you know, nearby and, uh, look at some smaller places, but then this, this opportunity came up for this, uh, this very nice, like newer built property uh, in near near Sun Valley, Idaho. Which, if you're familiar, that's a very very expensive area where you know. Oh, okay. Many celebrities and billionaires have second homes there or whatever. And so, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> they, they they always they apparently there's every year there's uh 
I don't even know what it is exactly. But we call it like a billionaire convention. Like you know, all these world billionaires fly in there on the, for this weekend and and get together and I guess talk about how to control the world. I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> there was a there was this assisted living place that came up. It was it was like uh, if I remember right, it was, it was three buildings. I think two two of them were normal assisted living. One was skilled nursing, uh, but it had additional like nine acres on the land, um, and it was actually going to auction uh, for for. Different reasons. It wasn't that the business was bad, but it had to do with more of the owner and some other stuff he was doing. But, um, but anyway, so this opportunity came up, and we're like, "Wow, this is pretty awesome!" Um, if we can get it, of course, at, at a, a low price, and mainly because of not just the business itself that would have produced great income, but also the extra land we would have leveraged and, and either built something on to lease out to you know doctors or whatever, or, or do something with it to somehow leverage and mm-hmm. use that to put back into other you know multifamily or other investments. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, in the end, we we so we end up on that one. We had a uh, a well, say a silent partner that was willing to put up three and a half million in cash. Uh, so we went in there to the, this auction to to bid on it and hoping we could have a chance to, to even get it. But uh, in the end, the, the bank actually beat out everybody because the I think the bank was owned. They 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 owed like I don't know another five million that the bank wanted to get. So they weren't going to sell anything less than that. Um, so nobody there in the end in that meeting got it. Mm-hmm. The bank has kept it. Uh, they later sold it, you know, maybe a week later, I think one of the people that were there did a private deal to, to see what they needed and, and mm-hmm. got it done, you know, but we had our, our limit was three and a half million. We didn't have any more than that. So we couldn't really go above that. So yeah, you know, we at least tried, but, oh, uh, but yeah, man. just <laughs> you know, missed it, out. Yeah. It, it was fun. It was a fun experience on the list to say, Hey, I, I, I bid three and a half million. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, oh, uh, that's cool. That that's fun. cool. But, so yeah. yeah, I'm definitely open to, you know, any, anything I said, anything that makes sense. And, and for me, that was, there was also a, personal reason with that as well because my at that point when my mom was going to be needing a that type of place very soon so I'm like well if we could have one that, that's ours that i have some say in how she's cared for that would be great you know that um, is yeah for sure well and that's you know and and keeping your eyes open to those opportunities i you know i find myself looking at at all these different deals that i see come across and it's like wow that's really great wow that one's really great too <laughs> and so and it's yeah. like well they're what I've learned in the last two and a half years of doing this is that there will always be more deals. There are right. always going to be deals coming along. So figuring out what fits your profile as an individual investor and, and what fits your portfolio, you know, what's going to, you know, help you diversify your portfolio or, you know, Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm a little heavy in the B and C class. Maybe I need some a class here to, to balance it out. You know um, I realized at this point, like I'm kind of heavy in multifamily. I'm not concerned about that. It's very low risk, but, right. um, you know, I, I am trying to now venture out into some of these other avenues and, and really diversify and try to add a little more, you know, bang to my buck here, you know, yeah. with the return profile. So, yeah. Yeah. And with like this, that. uh, with that, that development team, I was talking about the one here in Idaho, um, I guess it's safe to say that with you guys here. So we, we've we've received multiple unsolicited offers from other developers that want to purchase the project outright, you know, before we've even broken ground on it. Wow. Um, and, and so we're we're entertaining some of those as a possibility that we if we if we accept it, um, because we'll be able to get those 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 investors that are, that are already invested in this phase one, the beginning that two year return in less than a year. Um, wow. Because we're, we're we'll get enough that we'll pay them off, keep everybody happy. And that way they can roll that into our next deal, which we already have planned for Texas. Actually, <laughs> we've purchased oh, uh, we've purchased seventy five acres there in, in Texas that we're going to be building something very similar, uh, but bigger. Obviously, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's, the land's about because this one was on like a uh, sixty acres. Yeah. Um, oh no, no fifty one. Sorry. Mm, yeah, fifty one acres. Sorry. So so this seventy five acres is about fifty percent bigger. Um, yeah. So we're going to do more. It's going to be a mixture of residential and commercial. Uh, we don't know exactly just yet what. Is going to go there. You know, we're, we're the the team's going down uh, the end of this month with the architects and the engineers to kind of discuss what's going to, you know, be, be best fit. But it's going to be something similar to this because because uh, as we were we were well not I say we but not me but the team. You know, we were out uh, surveying different cities. We knew we knew we wanted to do something in Texas. Uh, so they took the design plan for what we're doing here in Idaho, kind of showed it to different cities. You know, like the mm-hmm. city, uh, Miss mm-hmm. Valley, whoever whoever's in charge of that stuff. Um, just kind of show them what we're doing, what we're looking to do. Um, and, and, uh, you know, a few of those were, of course, were just basically begging us to come and do something similar there because they, they saw how awesome this one was. They're like, wow, that's yeah. amazing. We'd love you to come do this here to, to help, you know, attract new people to move in. And, you know, all the, of course, besides that, the, the benefits it brings to the city for all the additional, you know, income and, and taxes yeah. and stuff. But, 
but uh, so in the end on this one, um, we're we're I guess I can tell you where it's at. It's, it's going to be in Killeen, Texas. Okay. Uh, which which uh, Neil Bawa is right now doing a, a, a property there as well, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know kind of using some of course his his research that he does. So I was like, you know, why do extra research? He did it. He already did it all. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, he sees that's where everything is is going towards that direction. So so mm-hmm. in the you know a couple years time, Killeen is going to be basically Austin. Um, yeah. and so it's, it's, you know, get ahead of the curve and get above that. So we were again the, the city was basically begging us to come there. We got a great deal to, to purchase this land. Um, and, uh, the, you know, the labor overall is going to be cheaper. Materials are cheaper there than it is here. So the overall cost to build is going to be less, which means in the end, higher returns for, for the investors. And so mm-hmm. on that one, again, with no, no details yet, cause with nothing set in stone, we don't know exactly what's happened. All that we know is the land is purchased. So we are doing something there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, we haven't discussed just yet what the returns will be, but I can guarantee they'll be at least as good, if not better than what we're doing the ones here. You know, so, mm-hmm. and these are going to be hundred percent build to rent. We plan to hold them long-term, not just sell it in five years because we want to hold them, you know, forever basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, so, so our plan is with the, the investors that uh, it's going to be also done in multiple phases, but uh, at, at the end of the whole thing or each phase, possibly uh, we'll do a refinance to pay it back to investors, mm-hmm. but give them the option of either either paying out at a higher payout or getting their full capital back plus some return and staying on with infinite returns you know so um that's a possibility where we're yeah the works to, to figure out yeah. once we know what we're doing there and all the costs are going to be involved but yeah um, yeah so that's 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 really cool yeah and i do have you know actually i had a conversation with an investor today um you know about whether or not we hold on to the investments or whether we get, you know, we were selling them and, and, you know, moving on to the next deal. And, and, you know, there, there is something we said for, for holding on and, and kind of having those infinite returns. That's, that's a lot more common in um, single family, obviously, but, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. something that I have seen a couple of businesses that are doing that now uh, with some of the multifamily, they're giving investors that option to, to kind of, continue to have ownership in these properties right. and i yeah. uh, there are investors who are very very interested in that kind of an option so right um yeah you know. I, saw, I saw one uh, recently as well that they had that <clears throat> although from, from my opinion the the the, the infinite return amount you're getting in the end was very low so i was like eh. mm-hmm. you know it wasn't that, yeah. that attractive but you know it's just the idea is it's okay you're getting infinite money for nothing sure i mean but at the same time it's like it's got to be enough to at least check you to want to go through the the process of waiting to get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah know? yeah but uh, sure. so so and, and then again with, with that regard you know i have a lot of say in this because the, these guys that do this development um typically in the past they've always just done build to sell build to sell you know everything everything they've done mm-hmm. they build townhomes and sell mm-hmm. them um ever since i joined the, the team with them i've been t- telling them more about hey let's do some build the holds and rent you know rent them out <laughs> you know you get yeah it'd be yeah. better better it'd be better for you guys you're not paying so much in taxes by selling these all uh mm-hmm. you know you get all those benefits from from the depreciation and everything and and um, so I've at least been able to convince them to that point. Like, okay, yeah, it makes, they, they now realize it makes sense to, to hold these. I so just sell them all. Um, yeah. and, uh, and then we're with, with that, again, they've never really done much of a full on say true syndication because most, they, they come from very wealthy family to begin with. So most of their deals they've done in the past, when they do these developments, they've funded them just from their own friends and family. They never mm-hmm. had to reach out to investors per se, it was just, you know, people they know they could easily raise a couple million, you know, no problem. So, uh, so that, that's kind of how I got involved with them though, is because I was mm-hmm. like, Hey, I'm, you know, a year ago when they actually approached me to invest in one of their, their opportunities at that point, um, I just started doing the networking and stuff and, and you know, very new still, but I was like, Hey, I'm, yeah. I'm talking to people like Bobby Jones and, and Janelle York. <laughs> it's like people that are investors that may want to invest in your deals, you know? So I was like, Hey, if you're, if you're willing to let me join your team, I can help, you know, raise capital and, and, uh, you know, do bigger deals with you. And, uh, you know, so luckily for me, they, they agreed and let me to, to join with them and do that. And, uh, and that's literally right, right after that, like literally like the next week is when this 800 deal, 800 unit deal came up kind of a style of blue. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so yeah, it was, it was great timing and, and, and yeah. everything, but, uh, um, so yeah, so, so that's what I've been doing is trying to, you know, raise capital in that and raise awareness of it. And of course, at first it was still, my first experience doing any kind of capital raise. And so it was, mm-hmm. and for new development and in that point a year ago, most people were like, eh, new development's very speculative. You know, we don't know what's mm-hmm. going to happen, you know, all this stuff. And so it was hard to get a lot of traction. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm at the point now I'm getting more people that have put in, you know, mm-hmm. decent amount of money. Um, of course, at this point, we've got it on hold. We're not, we're not taking any new investment just because 
if we do sell it, you know, why would we <laughs> take more capital now just to pay them back? Yeah, you know, yeah. For no reason, you know, so, uh, so that's on hold until we know for sure if it's selling or not, um, but most likely will. So, so I mean, it, it's still great for, again, for everybody that got in on yeah. it, you know, my stuff did, yeah. you know, great. You know, I, I my first person was, was planning to do the full, you know, cycle, re reinvest it in each phase, but I'll still get to do that with the one in Texas now. So, so you know, I'll be yeah. happy to get my money returns back and put more into this one. So I'll get even bigger returns, you know, so. Well, uh, just out, uh, you know? like we said, I mean, there's always another deal. There's always something yeah. else that's coming along that, that you can put that money into and put it to work for you. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's cool, man. I, I'm excited for what you're getting into and, and, and everything that you're up to. Uh, I, We'll, we'll definitely have some more conversations about this, uh, you know, because yeah, yeah, sure. um, I have a question for you, um, Don. You said something. You said you've only been I'm going back to your happy camper capital. Yeah. Did you say yep. You've only been involved with that company or with RV parks since November. Uh, both. <laughs> so the, the, the really? company, the, the company has been around longer. They've been doing deals before me. Oh, they, this they, is not your this is a company you started. Right. Yeah. I did not start oh. it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I wish I could say I did. You know, I get a lot of compliments. People say they like the name, the logo. I'm like, great, but I didn't do it. <laughs> but you know, thanks for the compliment. But uh, but yeah. no, they've been, they've been doing it for two or three years now on their own. Um, it was literally just two guys that, that started and did it all by themselves. They've just only recently, this last year, started bringing on additional people to help as it grows, expands. You know, so um, so yeah. So I just got in with them at the end of November. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. I thought all this time that this was your company. That you <laughs> no, yeah, wish I could say it was, but no. Uh, I was, and again, how this came about is because I was in that process of trying to do something like that. I was, besides trying to find, so, so I had a couple of people that were willing to do a JV deal with me. They had have, they have the capital to do a JV deal if I could find a great deal for them. Um, and so I'd been in that time trying to find something to like a 10 to 30 unit property along the way that would provide great returns that I'd feel comfortable putting their money into. Um, I couldn't really find anything. Uh, and I was trying to find bigger properties, like, you know, the, the hundred units and up to, so I could take to another team that does syndication. Say, Hey, I've got this property. Do you want to work with me and syndicate it? And, you know, um, to basically get, me, get myself in the GP that way, at least, at least on that one property. Um, or the other thing I was also search, searching for was partners. I was like, if I could find somebody that I get along with, great, that we, you know, everything's great, then we can form a team and just do our own deals, then great. Mm -hmm. I'll do that too. But uh, it, it was difficult for me to, to do any of those things. I couldn't find great deals. I couldn't find people that were willing to work with me, <laughs> you know, because I was still fairly new myself and, you know, I, I don't know. But, uh, and so in that just process, again, and networking with people, trying to talk to people. And, and again, with, with the campground stuff that, that kind of came out because of where I was at, I, I started networking with people in that space, offering to be boots on the ground. So I was just, hey, if you want to buy something here, I'd be, I can go check it out for you, take videos. My wife's a realtor. We can you know, help with the purchase, whatever. Um, and just doing that, you know, I met with these guys and talking about my goals and, and their goals, what we're looking to do. They, they just asked me to, to come join them. And was, so again, that's why I said it took, took about a month to think about it just because I don't want to look like this, you know, flip flopper trader or whatever. But, okay. but I was, again, I was like, you know what? I don't care what people say. This, this is a great opportunity and I'm, yeah. I'm not going to pass it up. But you're yeah. building this for your family. You can't worry exactly. about what yeah. other people say. Uh, so are you a co-GP with the happy camper capital people? Is yes. that what your role is? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's cool, man. I think it's so cool. And I, I, I'm excited to learn more about the, re, you know, uh, the return structures for the actual business itself. I'm sure you're, you're learning a lot more about that as well. And, uh, so we'll, we'll have to get into yeah. some of that, um, outside of here, but it is, uh, 9 15 PM Eastern time. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and call this one a wrap but thank you guys so much for <laughs> sure. being here um yeah. i need to go get some beauty sleep i'm looking at myself in in the picture here and my <laughs> eyes are getting droopy and so uh i i don't have that benefit of a couple more hours here done uh <laughs> yeah, yeah, no I, got, I gotta go pursue two. i actually would have already but, jumped up I, I had another meeting at seven but uh that got canceled uh, ah, okay okay more of a, our, 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 a jv meeting we had with the property i'm doing in arkansas uh, with, with yeah. some guys but uh, but they had to cancel for personal reasons. So, so otherwise cool. I would have cut out here for two minutes ago anyway. <laughs> but, hey man, well, I'm, uh, I'm so good. glad that you were able to be here and, uh, Janelle, uh, it's just been a pleasure getting to know you better and, uh, and having okay. that. Cool. So, yeah. um, yeah, thank you guys so much. And, uh, you know, Hey, we'll, we'll keep in touch. We'll see each other in some other meetups. I'm sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, so definitely. Obviously. All right. Well, y'all have right. a wonderful evening, and we'll see you next time. You too. Thank Good to see you. you. Too. Bye, Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.